Thank you guys for joining. So today we are going to digress a little bit and uh, answer these questions, this one and this one that I shared on the Telegram group. So as you can see, we have uh, two flows here. One is main flow, actually not, not two flows. Uh, we have main flow on the top, and there is another ATP listener, the second row, and we have publishers, uh, publish and consume operations. So the question is, if you send a request to the main flow, which is the main, the, the, the one on the top, what payload is then returned to the web client from the mail application? Like if you send, for example, a request from, from Postman to, to this main flow, what do you get? So let's, we'll start with that. And then we will answer, we'll also do this one. Okay, sorry guys, okay. So I have created flows. And first, let's review some concepts we saw uh, in the, in the class, like some weeks back. So in here, if you go to the website and uh, development, we have sync versus uh, sync processing. I have tried, as I shared in the Telegram group, I have tried to uh, group the videos by topic so that it becomes easier for you to search and navigate. So here, we have only three videos. So the first one, I just want to uh, point out a couple of concepts from the slides we saw at that time. Uh, this one is uh, synchronous versus asynchronous processing. And where it starts here. So flow, flow inference is used for synchronous process. So, we said flow reference is used for synchronous processing, whereas we saw uh, JMS and VM for asynchronous processing. Let's quickly review what synchronous and asynchronous are, processing are, and then we'll get back to the questions. So if it is synchronous, as you can see here, if a flow starts here and comes here, and we have this flow reference and it sends it references this flow. And this flow has different operations, as you can see, like this, different processors. So uh, the operation will not move forward until it gets a response from here. Until it gets a response from here. So this is synchronous processing. That means it is. It, the flow reference has a blocking effect and it waits until it gets it waits until it gets a response from the flow that is being called. That is what synchronous processing is. So it is one after the other, like it's sequential processing, right? It's, it is in sequence. So it comes here, this one, this processor, this flow reference references the flow on the bottom, and it has to wait until it gets results here. Once it gets, it goes like this, then this processor uh, transfers the uh, mill event to the next and so on. And we have another flow reference here also, referencing the same flow as the button. Still, as you can see, it sends this, uh, it references the whole, I mean the flow, the flow on the button and the whole, uh, all the processors in the, in the subflow or flow B here uh, have to be executed and it has to get the results before transferring the mean event to the next processor. So this is uh, synchronous processing, and we have been doing this a lot. So synchronous means one after the other in sequence, in sequence. Whereas asynchronous processing uh, or uh, async scope, we have this async scope. Uh, it is used for parallel processing. It is like fire and forget, and it doesn't wait for the results from from the from the other flow. So we have this uh, diagram here. Okay. So so see the flow gets triggered here, and a sync scope is here. 
This one is asynchronous processing. So what it does is the mid event gets sent to this async scope. And at the same time also, it gets us to the next uh, processor in the, in the synchronous flow in here. So it is sent in parallel to this one and also to this one, and it doesn't wait for a response from this block. So this is a synchronous processing, and it is used usually for parallel processing. If you have large volume of data, for example, you want to insert it to a database or to write it, and your application, you don't want it to be down until it does the data processing. You want it to continue its work. Uh, you use asynchronous processing. So synchronous versus asynchronous, these are the main differences. And in the other, uh, the other slide also, in here particularly, we saw a VM connector. So let's quickly review the slides and then we'll get back to the questions that I shared on the Telegram group and go over the flows I created. So we have VM connector here. It is used for asynchronous processing tool. So here it is used for intra-app, intra-minus within, and inter-app, inter-app minus, inter minus between. So it is used for communication within app, within the same app or between apps. And it is a transient and persistent asynchronous queues. So you see here, so this is asynchronous. So the questions I share, in the questions I share, the publish and consume are asynchronous. So we will see how they behave. And we say tran transient queues are in memory. So if your computer crashes or if it gets restarted, then the queues get lost, but they are faster because the data is not written to disk, we said. Whereas if it is persistent, it is more, it is more reliable because it writes the data to disk. If so, that means even if the computer crashes or even if you restart it, since it is in disk, it, it will retrieve it. So they have their own process and corners. But anyway, VM connector, as you can see, is asynchronous processing. It is mainly uh, used when we don't when we don't have uh, JMS connect JMS brokers third party JMS brokers, so we can't see that. And VM connector has uh, different um, different uh, operations. Let's see this slide first. So when we talk about queues, we have producers that send data to the queue, and we have consumers that consume. The, the data from the queue. So producer, when we say producer is, they send the messages to the queue and the consumer is, they consume the message from the queue. So when we talk about games or VM connector, uh, um, publish, a publisher uh, sends to the queue. When we say publish, it is send it to the queue. And when we say consume, it means get it from the queue. Uh, okay. And here, VM connector is mainly used for the following, to transfer the message from one flow to another, to distribute workload across a cluster because it can be used for work, for parallel uh, processing, to communicate with different apps running in the same mule domain. Okay, let's, this one is not important to answer the question. We have seen this before, so you can just watch the video uh, on this topic to, if you forget uh, any of this. So the VM connector has this operation is publish to publish the data into the queue, consume to pull data from the queue. And if there is no message in the queue, then the consume operation waits for, uh, for some time, like based on the configuration and it gives an error. There is also a listener to listen if there is a new data in the queue. But, and there is also publish consume. So this one is different from the first three. This one, it publishes and it waits. So this is basically synchronous. This is synchronous. Whereas these ones are asynchronous. These ones are like fire and forget uh, approach. Whereas publish and consume is it publishes and it waits for an answer. Uh, if we just say publish, it is just it publishes and it forgets what it has done. It doesn't wait for any response. So. Let's use the uh, uh, VM connector operations and answer the questions. So this question, um, 
I have created a flow for it rather than spending time to uh, like creating it from scratch here. I like usual, I created the flows and we just go over what I have done. So the publish consume, this is a class uh, flow that we created at that time when we saw VM connector, I have made some modifications and I will push it. So I added uh, the two questions. This one is Q's one, this one is Q's two. So let me show you what I have done. One thing is from now on, usually in one project, we will have multiple uh, configuration files. As you can see here, actually here, I don't have uh, multiple configuration files. The only one is, the only one that I have added is this global.xml. So configuration related, uh, uh, configuration related uh, specifications, we put them in the global.xml. And since it is within one project, uh, all these uh, other configuration files, the flows can use it. And we will see uh, also in the next classes, we will create another uh, file for error handling, another file for implementation, another file for interface and so on. Anyway, but this one, let me just show you the, the questions. So let's start, I think this one is easier. So in here, so this is VM connector. And here we have the different operations it supports. This is a listener, so this is like a trigger. And we have publish, we have consume, and we have publish and consume, which is synchronous, we said. So the question here, there is a listener here. This is HTTP listener, as you can see. And in the path, I am giving it just JMS2 because the first one, the first question is my question. Whereas the second question is from the practice. Uh, if you log into uh, Microsoft training and to um, see the any point fundamental scores at the end, it has uh, practice questions. So this question is from the from the practice questions. And uh, since I shared one question, and uh, uh, someone suggested it is good if we discuss it in class, that's why I am using this session to discuss that. So we have here, this is the path as usual, and they have a request, HTTP request here. Just in the configuration, I am specifying the, the host is a local host because I want to request this one, this listener. Uh, so what we do is if you come here, uh, show you the configuration, just we have here in the configuration, Local host, the port is 8081. Once I do that, then I give the, the path. If I give the path here, uh, the path here, as you can see, data two is path for this listener. If I show you the path for this listener, it is data two. So this request will send a request to this listener, to this HTTP listener. And this HTTP listener, it sends a payload of one. And I'm making it uh, just in, J in JSON format so that because to, to, to when we send the request from Postman, if it is Java, it doesn't render, so it, it is like binary. So here I am putting one. So basically this listener, it is going to return one. So this request now, the payload at this time is one. Since here it is get, when we send a request from postman, there is no any payload in the beginning, right? Once it comes here, this request, it sends a request to this one, and this flow, it returns a payload of one. And now here we have the, the payload is just one. And in this one, we have publish and consume. So as you say, this publish and consume, it sends, and it waits. So see here, publish and consume. To publish the message and then wait for a response from the consuming operation. So this guy, it is going to publish it. And I have the configuration for that. Uh, it is publishing it to num1. And the question is things like that. And I have num1 listener here. So this listener, is different. This listener is VM listener. As you can see, this listener is this one. But both of them, HTTP listener and VM listener are source of triggers. So 
but this one it listens to uh, messages published to queues. So particularly to Q1, to Q1, as it is, to QNAM1, I mean, QNAM1. I have created different queues uh, and it listens to this one. And it, okay, yeah, this, this one, it publishes to that queue. And this one, it listens to the same queue. It listens to the same queue. So what, the, what is happening here is when this guy publishes, to the queue num one, we have this one listening to the same queue. It will get the data. So that data is a payload and it is updating the payload as payload plus one. So this payload is data that is published here by this one, by this operation, by this publish and consume. It is publishing a payload, but the payload is just one, number one. This one, now this uh, VM listener, since once it is published, it is going to get, it, it will get triggered and the flow starts. And now the payload is payload plus one, which will be two. So here it was one. This one, it published a payload of one, but the return value is two because here we have payload plus one. So here it is two, the payload so far is two. In here, we don't care if it is published, it is just send and forget. So there is no response the payload will not be, uh, will not change. If it is just published, your uh, previous payload, the payload that was there before this publish operation will be your payload after this publish operation also. So this one, it is publishing to this queue, which is num num two to this queue, but in this queue, this queue, uh, once it gets triggered, um, it will just add one to the payload. However, we are not getting a response from that, so this one uh, will not have an impact on the payload on the payload that we'll have uh, after it because it's just send and forget or fire and forget. So the payload is so far two. Now, if we come here, last one in this set payload is payload plus one. So, so far our payload before we, before we got here, uh, our payload is two. Now we are adding one, it should return three. I guess this will be more easier if I run it in debug mode, let me run it in debug mode and show you. So the main thing is that uh, I have to remember here uh, are publish and consume is synchronous. It sends and it waits, but if it is published, it just sends and it doesn't get anything. So uh, it really doesn't change. So let me bring postman here. And the path was uh, JMS2. JMS2, let's send that. JMS2. So, did I add a breakpoint though? I didn't, okay. Okay, let's add breakpoints first. Add breakpoints so that we can see how the payload is changing. That's what we are tracking here. That's what we want to trace. Okay. And so here, now I can send my request. Send. Okay, my request has come and I didn't send any payload. Plus my message is explicitly get. So there is no payload in the beginning, right? As you can see, no payload now. Then there is a request. When I click next, the request operation, it is going to send a request to this flow, to this HTTP2 flow. Send. Now it comes here, as you can see. Now the payload still, still we don't have any payload because this set payload uh, component has not been executed yet. So when I click next, that will be executed and it will come to the a request operation with a payload of one. So it will stop here. Okay, let's see. 
If I do this, see now my payload now is one. And that one is just what we set here. My payload is one. Let's see how it changes now uh, in the next processors. So now I have published and consume. I will publish. Once I publish see this listener, once it pub publish, it picks it and it gets triggered. That is why it came to here. So now, once this, uh, this set payload is payload plus one, the previous payload, now my payload will be updated to the previous payload plus one. So my, my payload from here will be to after I click next processor. Num one, that Gardner is for, okay. Uh, this one, the, what it is saying is there is time out. These things we can't quickly see them. So this one, let's see. Uh, it gets it, it times out if it doesn't get uh, the which one is it? This one. So yeah, this one. If the response is not picked in five seconds, it it expires. So that's the reason it gave me an error. I can just increase the number. Let me increase the other one also. Not encounter another error. Because we are running it in debug mode. That's the reason. Okay. So just click next. I will exit this and send another request. Cancel. Send. Wait, it's updating. Let's see. If you come to the console and. Okay. Leave this. Send another request. Error. Okay. Let me see. Did I stop it? It's running. Uh, probably I need to restart it, maybe. Okay. So stop it and run it in debug mode again and leave the console. So, yeah, uh, we reached here. We had a payload of this one expired and give an error message. Yeah. Okay, it didn't take much time. That's good. Is it deploying or giving an error? Uh, let's see. Uh, since there is some error somewhere, or oh, that error should not matter. Let's see. Okay, deployed. So clear this. And I'll bring this here. Let's send another request. So I explained up to the publish and consume. So I will click, quickly click next processor, next processor. Okay, next processor, next processor. Now my payload is two, as you can see in this publish. So publish will publish a payload of two, but publish doesn't wait for a response. So the payload of two will not change until I come to this uh, set payload processor. Now, as you can see, so far my payload is two, as you can see it here, see it here two. But now at the, at the final stage in this set, payload, my our payload, we are updating it to the previous payload plus one. So two plus one should be three. It is coming to here. Uh, this one is getting triggered. Uh, the listener that listens to uh, this publish, the second one, but uh, a response doesn't get returned. So it will not impact our final output. So our final output is three, as you can see. So yeah, you can practice this like that if you want you can create it yourself or i will also just share this in github and you can download it from there and run it in debug mode and understand it okay so i will stop this and i have another one this one is slightly different the order matters the order i just went want to point out that the order matters this one it is post and the question uh, the question is if you send your name see here if we send your name to the main flow, what do you get from Postman if we send our name to it? What do we get? So this is post because we are sending our name. So our initial payload is our name. 
Now there is publishing. This one, it publishes to, to um, Q1. One is the name of the Q, and I have I have this uh, listener that listens to Q1, and it makes the payload, the payload concatenated with I hope you are doing with this with this with this string, and also the payload if it is not string, it makes sure it is converted to string first. Payload as string means if the payload was not string, it converts it to payload to string. Uh, however, this publish it doesn't get a response. So this publish will not change our payload, right? If I send FSA, for example, uh, when the listener gets, when the flow gets triggered, the payload is just FSA. Here, the payload is just FSA. Until I get here, still it is FSA because it doesn't get a response, the publish. But publish and consume will. Now this request, let's see what it requests. It requests, uh, this HTTP listener. And this HTTP listener is also post. And what it does is it gets a data. See this one, this request is not get, it is post. It sends data. If it is get, is it is to get data. If it is post, it is to send data. In this case, it is sending the payload. If I just click it here, I can show you what it is sending. It just sends the payload, which is a name in this case. And this listener, uh, actually, this listener, let's see, um, it gets that, it gets that payload, and it modifies it modifies it like this. It adds the string, how the space, and concatenate to it with a payload as a string, and then concatenate to it comma. So in this case, my payload, from this HTTP one to the to the HTTP request will be uh, the name concatenated with this string. Here it will be converted the name. Now it will be altered. The payload will not be just the, the name, but rather if it was, for example, John, it will be howdy John, uh, comma, until here. That will be what we get back to here. And we have publish and consume here. This publish and consume. Now it sends and it waits. So like the same, the same concept like the first question we saw. So it publishes it, it publishes it to the Q to the Q2. Let's see that Q where it is. It is this one. And that Q, it has a listener. And this listener, uh, once it gets triggered, we have this set payload. And this set payload, it what it does is. Uh, the payload it got, it concatenate to it, I hope you are very. So this is string, I hope you are very. So if the name was John, in here, it changed it to howdy John, comma. And in here, I hope you are very. It changed it to that. This one is not having an impact because this JMS1, JMS1 is not having an impact because it is just published, and it is not. If it is published, it does. We don't get a response back. So whatever happens here, whatever happens in this flow, will not impact our main flow here. So so far, we have reached here, and we have. Uh, if it was John, we said, "How did John, comma? I hope you are very." Then at the end, we are further modifying our payload as that payload and concatenate to it at the end well today. So it should return, if the name, if I give it John, it should return, how did John, I hope you are very well today. Let's run this in debug mode and see it and I'll take any questions you have. So run in debug mode. I think the main thing you have to remember here is just if it is published, it doesn't it doesn't all alter the payload. Whereas if it is published and consume, it is similar to a flow reference in this case. It is synchronous. It gets a response. It sends and also it waits until it gets a response. And you have said if you get errors with the HTTP request and also with the publish and the consume, 
if you get time out errors, just increase the uh, time out uh, time in the configuration. For the HTTP request, you need two timeout configurations. For the response, to send the response, and uh, let me show you this one, what I'm talking about. I think if you come here, we have this one, connection idle timeout, and also in here, uh, where is it in here also, response timeout. So if this is 10 seconds, and if you are running it in debug mode, it will give you an error if it take more than 10 seconds. So just put some big numbers. Okay. Um, so let's try this now. The path is, I think, GMS1. So I'll change this to one. The reason that I started with two is that it's relatively easier. But the concept is the same. Uh, oh, yeah, the message, message is not allowed with error code 405 because the message is post where to send names. So actually, I didn't even put my name here. So if I put my name here, let's see what it gives. So this is the payload in the beginning, just my name. If we come here, so see, here is a payload, just my name in this case. I will move this down. Let me click next. Now we have the HTTP request. Then it will come. So the before it goes to the HTTP listener, this VM listener has triggered this. That it has been triggered. That's why it went to this one. But that one will not respond. Will not send any response to the main flow. See now it go it goes to the HTTP listener, and our payload so far is my name. So from this publish, it went to this one. But since it didn't return any anything it didn't alter the payload next the request it send uh, it requests this one and here it is here and the payload so far is just what i sent just my name as you can see here but this one it is going to alter the payload as how the my name comma so click next you see it now this is now the payload so far this publish and consume it is going to send the payload, which is this one. Not, not my name, not what I sent from Postman, but just the payload uh, in this operation. So click Next. It came to here, as you can see. Now the payload will be uh, changed uh, to it. I hope you are very, will be uh, concatenated to it at the end. So click Next. You see, now. You see the payload, the payload, how it has changed. How the, my name, I hope you are very, and at the end, we have well today. So this is our final payload. See how it has changed. It just sent it some, some name, and from the different operations, it has changed like this. So this is what it returns. And the reason we have seen this many times, but just to remind you, when we have a flow, like in an HTTP listener, by default, it returns the last payload. You can see it from here, from the responses. And the response, uh, it returns the payload when everything is fine. But if, it, if there is an error, it returns by default an error description. But you can change what it should return here. So that is what we, are, what we get because of that configuration. Let me change this to John. The same thing. How did John? I hope you are very well today. Should be what it should return. Oh yeah, it is in debug mode, so I have to click next, next, next. So in the certification, at least one there is such one question, and uh, I don't want you to get overwhelmed when you see such kind of. Uh, a couple of flows with multiple processors. It is easy once you understand it, like this practice it, and uh, it will be easy. Okay, let me see. Okay, yeah. Uh, so this one is it. And uh, 
Okay, I want to show you, we have some 20 minutes. Let me first stop this and I will cover a couple of things. Uh, close. So I, this publish consume, I will push it. You can get it from GitHub. <clears throat> and uh, there was one question Asqual asked me and it was, I guess in here, yeah. It is this one. So this question, let me make it. So see this question, it says a company has an API to manage departments with each department identified by a unique department ID, DPT ID. The API was built with RAML according to Microsoft's best practices, underline this best practice. So now the question is, what is valid RAML to specify a method to update the details for a specific department? And we said, we selected this one D, right? We have departments under it. This should be a URI parameter and the URI parameter is put under curly braces. All of them, they should have columns at the end and the method to update is patch. All of them, I think the method, we don't have a problem with the method, it is patch. And the question, uh, the, the question here that can be raised is, what if we want to use query parameter. So if you want to use query parameter, generally, the way we put query parameter is like this one, we put the resource and then the method, then the query parameter, and we specify the query parameter name. So the question here is, when do we use query parameter? And when do we use um, the RI parameter? See this best, Microsoft's best practices. Uh, also, we should underline that. So here I have added this note so that anyone who uh, reads this question can get help from this one. So we use the RI parameter uh, to identify specific resource or resources. So if you have an ID of something, uh, uh, the recommendation is to use uh, URI parameter, as you can see here. Like if I have hotels, a specific hotel with a hotel ID, uh, then I you I put it as a URI parameter. However, if it is for sort sorting or filtering from a resource, I, I I can I use query parameter. Like for example, if I have this one should be employees. If it is employees, uh, let me make it now. Let me let me forget it later. Let's say this is employees uh, resource, and we want to get the employees who have a level of senior, senior level or entry level or mid level kind of thing. Uh, in that case, we use query parameter. So I hope that answers uh, your question as well. So in this, in this question, uh, according to uh, recommendation, it should be D, it should be RI parameter. 